Keir Starmer's election strategy seems to be built on two pillars. The first pillar is his constant snide remarks and denigration of the former party leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Here's what he had to say at a meeting for business leaders last week. What a petty, nasty, spiteful little man Keir Starmer is. Keir Starmer asked an audience of business leaders if they would have come to a Labour business conference in 2019. No, shouts an audience member. Stammer jokes there is no audience participation and tells people to put your glitter away. Yes, apparently, that counts as a joke in Stammer circles. Keir Stammer treating this event as a mark of the transformation the party has undergone in recent years, jokingly asking business leaders if they would have turned up to a similar event had they been invited in 2019. But the facts are, his predecessor was not anti-business, and business leaders invited him to talk to them in 2019. Just address something right away to you. It is sometimes claimed that I am anti-business. Actually, this is nonsense. It's not anti-business to be against poverty pay. It's not anti-business to say that the largest corporations should pay their taxes just as smaller companies do. And it's not anti-business to want prosperity in every part of our country, not only in the financial centres of the City of London. And I say this to business too, if a Labour government is elected on the 12th of December, you're going to see more investment than you've ever dreamt of. You're going to have the best educated workforce you could ever have hoped for. The first line from his speech that you just saw in that clip there was, and thank you very much for inviting me to speak here today. As Catherine succinctly puts it, not everyone will agree with his policies, but one thing that is noticeable about Corbyn's address to the CBI is that he didn't need to sneeringly put down his predecessors to establish his credentials. Also, he actually had policies. The second pillar of his election strategy seems to be a never-ending series of U-turns. Let's have a quick look at what has been U-turned on this week. A year ago, Keir Starmer said, I will abolish the House of Laws to restore trust in politics. Except, as it turns out, he'll neither be abolishing the House of Laws or restoring trust in politics. Labour has ditched its pledge to introduce an elected House of Lords. The Observer reports that Labour is expected to only back limited changes, such as abolishing the 91 remaining hereditary peers. Other than that, there will be no reform. Yep, now he's planning to just get rid of the few remaining hereditary peers. But that makes sense when you think about it. There's far, far too many of his Blairite and Tory pals riding the gravy train that is the House of Lords. And then, let's not forget, the multimillionaires and corporate CEOs who are currently stuffing Labour Party coffers, well, they're going to have to be rewarded at some point in the future. Just like the Tories, Stammer needs the House of Lords. How else is he going to repay the debts owed to all those multimillionaires and CEO corporate donors? I mean, it'd be perfectly clear, we all know, the House of Laws is an essential component to the smooth running of the corruption that runs right through the British political system. If you don't believe me, just look at recent Tory and a little bit further back, New Labour appointments to the House of Lords and work out exactly why they got into the House of Lords. And believe me, it had nothing to do with their contribution to society, but everything to do with their contribution to the respect of party funds. Then we have the U-turn on banker bonuses. Labour has no intention of reinstating cap on bankers' bonuses, says Reeves. Victoria Derbyshire tweeted, Labour's Rachel Reeves says they will not reinstate the bankers' bonus cap. Last year, she tweeted, In midst of their cost-of-living crisis, the Conservatives are scrapping the cap on bankers' bonuses. 
It tells you everything you need to know about this government. Well, Rachel, your sudden change of heart on the issue tells us everything we need to know about you and a future potential Labour government as well. But, hmm, I wonder what prompted this sudden change. Bankers' bonus is your turn. Labour took £2 million from city-linked firms in two years before deciding it wouldn't cap bankers' bonuses. Always, hashtag, follow the money. Labour will serve the interests of its mega-wealthy donors, not those it's supposed to represent. So, as always, there's plenty of money for the bankers, for the well-off, for corporate CEOs, but it's a completely different story when it comes to those at the other end of the social spectrum. Like so many other playwrights, currying favour with the rich and powerful while sticking the boot into the most vulnerable and poorest in society is built into Ray's DNA. And talking of the poorest and most vulnerable in society... Clarifying, Labour's happy to cap child benefit but not manker's bonuses? Well, I would not make that comparison. I just did. The, the, the point around this is, this is not about limiting. The bank's bonus policy was never about how much people are paid. It's the structure. So basically, what was previously bonus went into basic pay. So I just want to be clear, that's not about people saying bankers should earn more. That's not our view. But you're capping shall benefit, but not bankers' bonuses. Well, Bottom line. The official reason the Labour Party is given for these dizzying U-turns is a bulletproof manifesto. So to be clear, bulletproof means there's nothing that the Tories or the right-wing press could disagree with. So, the way things are going, they might as well issue a joint manifesto, certainly save on paper and reading time. What an excellent approach. In order to avoid being criticised by the other party, simply copy their entire manifesto and ditch your own. There's that forensic genius for you. But the real reason? The ditching of all these pledges has nothing to do with some electoral calculation. Keir Starmer is guaranteed to win the next election. These policies that he's ditching, such as cap on bankers' bonuses, uh, nationalisation of the utilities, abolition of the House of Lords, these are popular policies that even popular with quite a few Tory voters as well. So winning the election, gaining votes to win the election, that really isn't the motivation behind these moves. Voting intention. Conservatives 20%, Labour 47%, survey taken 16 to 17th of January 2024. Keir Starmer is guaranteed to be the next Prime Minister. The party could submit a blank sheet of paper as its manifesto and they'd still be guaranteed to win thanks to the complete implosion of the Tories. Starmer's Labour don't need to offer lifelong traditional Labour voters anything. They don't need to work for those votes. They've got an army of disaffected Tories looking for a new Tory party to vote for to make sure they win the next general election. But I think it goes beyond just no longer needing traditional Labour votes. Um, it's links us right back to where we started with Starmer's obsessional hatred of Jeremy Corbyn, um, a hatred shared by the whole right-wing faction that surrounds him. These people, Labour's hard right, they basically instructed Labour voters, traditional Labour voters, not to vote Labour while Jeremy Corbyn was the leader. But the problem is, millions of voters did vote Labour in Jeremy Corbyn as leader. Millions voted for Labour in 2017, and despite the devastating defeat, millions still voted Labour in 2019. And this is the crime that Stammer's faction cannot forgive them for. They must be punished as well. It's not just the left-wing Labour MPs that supported them. It's not just the left-wing party members that supported Corbyn. It's actually those Labour voters, ordinary Labour voters, who simply ignored the instructions and decided to vote Labour anyway. They are now also in the sides of this fanatical Blairite faction 
currently controlling the Labour Party. Owen Jones posted, The Labour leadership is determined to purge all left-wing MPs. That means Labour will be no place for anyone who opposes war crimes, supports public ownership, investment, taxing the rich, scrapping tuition fees. But I think it goes beyond what Owen is suggesting. This current mob in charge of the Labour Party, they're not going to be happy with the purging of the left-wing MPs. They're not going to be happy with the purging of the left-wing members. They are also now looking to purge ordinary, lifelong, traditional Labour voters. They want them gone. They don't want them. Literally, they want them out of the Labour Party family completely because quite a number of them voted for Jeremy Corbyn in 2017 and again in 2019. Purging the left and ditching socialism could see Labour lose voters, the key Stammer warned. But the thing is, I don't think he cares. I think he's perfectly content and perfectly happy and perfectly assured in the fact that he's getting enough Tory voters defecting over to him that he can easily do without any left-wing voters voting Labour at all. They now want to purge the party's own traditional left-wing voters. When you look at the provocative actions being taken and the provocative statements about the love of Margaret Thatcher, etc., you can come to any other conclusion but that they are now attempting to purge traditional lifelong Labour voters. Now, bear with me on this. That would mean that Keir Starmer's transformation of the Labour Party into his Labour Party will be complete. He'll have right-wing policies, he'll have right-wing MPs, he'll have a right-wing membership, and all that will be supported by what was traditionally the voter base for the Conservative Party. And he presto, the likes of Stammer, Reeves, Blair, Manderson, they will actually have created their perfect political home, a Tory party in all but name. Labour are the real Conservatives, says Keir Starmer, as he promises to protect, oh, our way of life. And what about the rest of us? And by ours, I mean anybody even vaguely to the left of Margaret Thatcher. What are we supposed to do? Are we going to just continually and blindly vote for a party that we've spent our whole life opposing simply because it carries the legacy brand name of Labour? Or are we actually going to spend some time looking at the candidate list in our constituency at the next election in order to find somebody that comes somewhere close to our political values, the political values that we've held for our whole lives, thanks to his army of defecting Tory voters, we, we can vote with our conscience, safe in the knowledge that the current Tory shower is definitely going to be replaced by another Tory shower come the next general election. So, Vote with your conscience and vote for the candidate that you feel most closely matches with your political beliefs. And let's just take Keir Starmer at his word when you told all of us collectively in the vehicle on the left, there's the door, feel free to use it. Thanks for watching the video. Please help support Left Wing Voices on social media by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Okay, chat soon.